What if you had the ability of turning your world into a painting? This is Epson's tutorial for HitFilm Express. Okay, let's get straight into it. So first I added my material in Media tab and added them here on the timeline. Then I made a simple zoom out with the two keyframes by changing the position and the scale so we get the zoom out effect. And here where we start to do the magic because we want to take everything after I snap my fingers to change. So it's right about here. What we need to do now is to turn each of the frames into PNGs, individual PNGs for Epson to work properly. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to change the in point to the playhead. One way to do it is just by pressing I because then you get the exact frame you have on the viewer. And then we go to the last frame and hit O in the keyboard. So that's our content area. What we're going to do now, we are going to hide these logos and text. We don't need them. And export this range. How we're going to do that is by choosing the right preset. Let's go to presets. And here we have PNG sequence. Let's select that. So we have the little green marker here. Okay, now we have the right range. So we choose export and export now in to out area and we click this it only exports the part that is selected on the timeline okay the export is ready let's browse into the right folder so it created an editor folder here we're going to take all the images and and paste them into the PNG folder we created before. We're going to take Epson tutorial, create a new folder and name it PNG. Next, we want to open Photoshop and choose one of the images that will work as the keyframe that will change the rest of the clip to look fantastic. I'm going to choose some simple preset from Photoshop so it's very easy to follow along because I'm moving my hand in the beginning I think it's a good idea to choose a picture where my hand is up so let's take for example this picture it's 0176 0176 0176 here we go and now let's just find some nice filter that makes it look it makes it look nice. Okay, first I'm going into image adjustments and bring out some more light into the picture. The default setting is fine for the tutorial. Then we can check the filter, ga filter gallery and choose something nice. First I'm going to use the cutout because it looks nice. Then I'm going to add another effect on top of it. Okay, maybe fresco. Let's just make it easy. Now as the last bit, I can slightly change the tone just to make it more interesting. Um, let's add some color to it by adding a couple of layers, something funky. And another one. Okay, let's merge them together and change the opacity and the screen mode to something else so we get a nice effect to it. 
Okay, that is not too drastic. Overlay works fine. And when we are happy with the picture, we want to save it as a PNG. You can use the function save for web. So you want to save it in PNG 24. And very importantly, uh, here we have the PNG folder and we want to create another folder and call it the key. We're going to save it there with the same name of the frame we used to create this image. Very important. Because Epson will be using that as a reference to create the clip. Now it's time to install Epson if you don't have it already. So go to epson.com, download and install it. I'm not going through the instruction because it's a very simple installation process. Once that is done, um, it's a good idea to copy the shortcut on your desktop so you can e open it easily. My desktop is very messy, so let's just add an empty notepad. When you open Epsynth, it looks like this. It's very easy to use and let's go through the steps. So first you want to find the keyframe that you're going to use for your video. So browse into your work folder. For me, it's Epson tutorial. Choose the key and choose the key frame we just created. Make sure it's PNG. Then select the video and that will be the PNG folder. And click just any of the frames and click open. And it will automatically choose the images. As you see here, it says image and then you have this um, variable. So it automatically processes all the images inside this folder. Now, once these are set, there's nothing else to do except we're going to choose the right folder where we want to have the final uh, processed PNGs. So new folder and we're going to call it run one. You can name it however you want. I'm going to call it run one and run all. And now starts the fun part where we are just waiting. So Epson takes the keyframe, compares it to the original frame and processes the first frame. And from that, it processes the one before, the one after, and slowly generates all the frames around it. And finally, when it's done, we are going to see the end result. Be patient. If you have a slower computer, takes considerable time. For a small clip, this probably takes an hour. We can already go inside the folder called run one and check how it looks like. And here we have our first frames. Let's take a sneak peek. Okay. See? Promising. Very nice. I'm going to stop filming for now and return once it's completed. So if you don't have access to Photoshop, here is a quick how to to get the similar results in game. Let's take our frame. Choose colors, auto, color enhance to get a bit more saturation and filter I like to use is artistic and simple linear iterative clustering. So this is pretty neat. Yeah, this for example, this is good. Let's create a new layer for the um, for the gradient. So I have a red color here. We choose the bucket and the gradient here. Just drag and drop. Change the mode to multiply. Looks good. Create another layer. Okay. And change the color to blue. And drag from here. Mode multiply. Mm, maybe 
maybe a bit too much we can change the opacity here and also move it a bit out of the picture okay something like this let's keep it yeah okay that's good now right click file and export as and we don't want to overwrite our original so we are going to create a new folder call it key gimp and export with the same frame name and hit OK in the options or export in this case okay and gimp is done I actually like the result enough that I'm going to run this also through WebSynth and see how it looks. I will add the result at the end of the video, so make sure to watch it until the end to see how the GIMP version looks like. Okay. Now WebSynth has finished um, processing the PNGs, so we're back in HitFilm and we're going to import the PNGs as an image sequence. So we can find it under the media tab. You have the import button here. If you click on the arrow, then you will see the option for image sequence. Click that and choose your run one. Okay. And click on the first one and hit control plus a control a so that means select all now you have everything selected and click open so now we can drag it on the spot and we will see the result that this will be super interesting it's the first time I'm doing it like this so it's a surprise for me as well Okay, I'm happy with the result. Now to finish it up, we're gonna just make these layers visible again and we are ready to render. It was pretty easy. Export. Uh, let's choose YouTube 1080. Export the file as intro. This is just a very simple overview of what is possible with Epsynth. Obviously, I just use something very simple in Photoshop or GIMP. You can also start playing around with this software. When you get more advanced, you can actually start painting on top of the images and bring out more colors and textures. And only your imagination is the limit what you can create with this tool. So that's all for today. For the last bit, I will show you the results I got with uh, GIMP. And hit a like if you enjoyed the video. And please leave any comment or question and I'll do my best to answer it. See you in the next video. This is Epson's tutorial for HitFilm Express.